So this is the first video lecture of our new DSA design series. So we will start with the basic question. Okay, we will start with the basic question. The question is design hash map. So what we have to do here, design a hash map without using a built-in hash table libraries. Okay, so we have to implement this hash table class. My hash map class, we have to implement this class without using a hash map. Okay, we have to implement this constructor function. We have to implement this put function. We have to implement this get function and we have to implement this remove function. This put function help us to insert a key value pair into the hash map. Okay. It helps us to insert a key, like we are given a key and a value. It helps us to insert that key value pair into a hash map. Okay. This get function returns the value to which the specified key is mapped or it returns minus one if that key is not present in our map. Simple, right? And this remove function help us to remove that key and its corresponding value from our map. Okay. So we have to implement this whole class or you can say we have to implement this whole system. Simple. Okay, now let's go to whiteboard and understand it better. Okay, now I have to implement all of these functionalities, all of these functions, but I don't have to use hash map, right? So what data structure can I use here? Uh, I think I can use a vector. I think a vector can behave as a hash map. Let's see, let's see how. So first I will create a vector. So a vector of type integer and let's name it a vector. Okay, let's name it back. Now what? Okay, let's first talk about this constructor function, my hash map function. Okay, so whenever we create the object of a class, the constructor function of that class gets called, correct, basic groups. So whenever I will create the object of my hash map class, this constructor function will get called, right? And when this constructor function will get called, I will resize my vector to 10 to power 6 plus 1, 10 to power 6 plus 1 size, and I will give it a value minus 1. Why I am doing this? Why I am doing this? I am resizing my vector to 10 to power 6 plus 1 size because the key, the maximum value of my key will be 10 to power 6. The maximum value of my key will be 10 to power 6. And I want all the indices of my vector to behave as a key. Okay. I want you guys to understand this. So I will repeat it again that why I am resizing my vector to 10 to power 6 plus 1 because I want the indices of my vector to behave as a key. Okay. What I mean by that? Let's see. Let's see. Let's create a vector. Let's create a vector. So this is a vector index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And let's say up to 10 to power 6. Okay. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and up to 10 to power 6. And we have minus 1 here. Initially, we have minus 1 here. Okay. Okay. Now, let's talk about this put function. We have already talked about the constructor. Let's talk about this put function. So this put function insert a key value pair into a hash map, right? And we want our vector to behave as a hash map. Okay. So let's say if we have to insert this key value pair, three comma four into a hash map, what we will do? I told you that these indices of my vector will behave as a key. So this is my key and this is my value, right? So I will directly go to index three because my key is three. So I will go to index three and I will directly put my value there. So I will update this value to four. Okay, simple. Let's insert uh, five comma 10 to our hash map. Okay, and then we will insert five comma nine to our hash map. Okay, let's first insert five comma 10. We will go to index five here and we will update the value to 10. Simple, again, let's talk about this. We will go to insert index five again, and we will update the value to nine. So this is how we implement the put function. Okay, simple. Now let's talk about the get function. Because in get function, we will be given a key. Okay, we have a key in the get function, right? We have a key as a parameter. So this get function return the value to which the specified key is mapped or it return minus one. So let's say, First, we will call the get function uh, for key three. 
Okay. Okay. Let's see if we will call a get function for key three. So my key is three, right? I will go to index three and whatever the value will present at the index three, I will return that value. Simple as that. Okay. So I will return four. So from here, I will return four. Again, let's call get function for key two. I will go to index two and I will return the value which is presented at index two. So the value there is minus one. This minus this minus one represents that there is not a single key which is equal to two in our hash map. Okay, there is not a key value pair where the key is two in our hash map. Simple. Okay, so we have successfully implemented the get function also. Let's talk about the remove function. Okay, what does this remove function do? This remove function removes the key and its corresponding value if the map contain the mapping for the key. Okay, so if I will call this remove function for let's say key three, so this remove function will okay my key is three. I will go to index three and I will directly put minus one there. Okay, minus one here means that in our hash map we don't have a key value pair where the key is three. Correct. Okay, so this is how we can remove. A key from a hash map. Let's say we have called a remove function with a key two, and then we will call the remove function with key five. So if I will call a remove function with with a key two, I will go to index two, and I will just update the value to minus one. It is already minus one, so we don't have to do anything here. Okay. For this function with the key five, we'll go to index five, and I will update the value here. I will make it minus one. Okay, so we have successfully removed key five from our hash map. So this is how we can implement a hash map without using a hash map. Okay, so now I'm going to code the same thing line by line. Okay, the exact same thing I will code line by line. So let's see. First, first what I have to do here, I have to create a vector, right? So let's create a vector. Okay, created a vector. Now I told you when we will create a object of this class, this constructor function will get called, and when this constructor function will get called, I will resize my vector. So vector dot resize what ten to power six plus one. I will resize the vector to ten to power six plus one. Let's see three and three. Yes, and I will give it a value minus one. Done. First function done. Constructor function done. Now let's talk about put function. In put function, what we have to do, we will go, just go to vector to the index which is equal to key, and we will just update the value there. As simple as that. Okay. For get function, turn the vector with index equals to key. Remove function, we will just go to the vector. We will just go to the index which is equal to key, and we will write down the value minus one there. We will update the value to minus one there. So we have successfully implemented our hash map, guys. We have successfully implemented the hash map. I'll just run it. And let's see our code is working or not. So yeah, code is getting accepted. It's submitted. Okay, we have successfully submitted our code. Right. So now let's talk about the time complexity then. Right. Let's talk about the time complexity. The time complexity of this put function is O of one, constant, right? We are doing nothing but just just updating a value, and we are doing it in a constant time. Similarly, the time complexity of this get function is also O of one, and the remove function is also O of one. Okay, so the time complexity of all the functions is constant. What about space complexity? We are creating a vector. We are using a vector of size word, ten to power six. Let's say n is equal to ten to power six. So we can say the space complexity of this code is O of n. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's it for this question. And if you guys really understood my explanation, I want you guys to like let me know through comments, right? And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and keep putting to the next video drops.